So recently there are ballots for the primary election that were having the option, that weren't leaving an option, but were requiring party affiliation to be written in. What was your, your expression when you had seen that? And also what was the expression then of Democrat voters in your constituency to it? All right, a couple of things. First of all, many people think this is new. This is not new. For the past several presidential primaries in Washington, in order to vote in the presidential primary, you have to check a box attesting that for that election only, for that ballot, you identify with either the Republican or Democrat or another party. Uh, I can't stand that idea. I've been opposed to it for years. Several years ago, in 2019, I started trying to run bills here at Olympia that would get rid of that requirement to check a box about what party you're in. Uh, the majority party here, the Democrat Party that controls the majority in Olympia in the legislature, shot all those efforts down. Tried it in 2019, we tried it again in 2021, None of those efforts to get rid of check the box were successful. The, the majority likes the idea of making people attest what party they identify with for the presidential primary. Now, it's only for the presidential primary. No other election requires that. And the presidential primary in our state is separate of the other, of the general primary, of the primary for governor and lieutenant governor and, and legislature and all the rest. So the presidential primary stands apart and it has this requirement on it. It's a terrible requirement because people in Washington are famously independent minded. They may vote Republican, they may vote Democrat, but they don't consider themselves Republicans or Democrats. And we like that about Washington. So this attestation is a bad idea. We need to get rid of it. But at current, in order to get rid of it, we need to get a new majority in Olympia. No, no, she's not showing up. Oh, and there's one more, one more question I did have relating to the uh, la latest that I had done when I was at uh, the Iowa caucuses. They were actually talking about the uh, the ID system. So when the primary ballots were cast, they complained that they were being cast, but in anything like a bag and so on. How much do you, can you attest personally, or just from people you know about? the efficiency or maybe even a question about other states primaries or how they're casting them like say the Iowa caucus where they were fit where the media ran that circle about the high V bag right so the question of voter ID at, in primaries or caucuses is a little different than voter IDs in general elections. Generally speaking, the ID requirements at caucuses are looser. Now they're still there. You're supposed to provide ID at a caucus to show that you're you, but the chain of custody of controlling caucus polls, the votes that come out of caucuses is less formal than in a general election, a, 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 a November election. So there's always a risk of voter ID issues at a caucus, no matter how hard we try to demand and require that people provide, a, you know, picture ID. In a, some ways, those issues are reflective of the larger issue we have in Washington State of voter ID always being weak and the chain of custody on ballots being broken always with mail-in voting. And do you believe that there should be a sort of etiquette or do you believe that as long as you have a rigorous enough collection that even having, say, them collecting a bag or a bucket is in signs that it's a, a very low down version of a primary collection. I'm not keen on the bags and buckets. I think there should be stricter uh, chain of custody, ballot control than that. But I understand it's the tradition of caucuses that they kind of do it like that. They do it in a less formal way. And, you know, uh, that's what a caucus is. Uh, we can move away from the caucus system. Maybe that's the solution to better integrity.